Let's look at an example here. Quick case study. That's better. So what we've got on the left is basic example, 35 year old male funding a policy, 30,000 for five years, can easily design it to go longer, but a short pay, breaking even year four, looks great, 1090 split, 10% base premium, term rider attached, there it is. As the whole life death benefit goes up, the term comes down, keeping you level at the $1 million death benefit. Where we came up with the $1 million, or I should say the $30,000 figure here, is, there you go, based off the MEC limit. Meaning that $1 million for a 35 year old male got us almost exactly a $30,000 MEC limit. It was a couple hundred dollars higher with this particular company. So this is a maximum cash value policy based off of this 35 year old's 35 year old male situation, he looks at it and says, man, I like this, but I just don't think that I'm there yet. Not a fit right now. No problem. Let's propose a convertible term policy. So now we take out a 20 year term, $1 million death benefit, just under 500 bucks per year for the annual premium. So now he can make that premium payment every single year, guaranteed to remain level for 20 years, and he has the option to convert it partially or fully during that 20 year period. So that's the advantage and it is based off of his health rating. He's a 35 year old runner. So we'll assume the best class. A lot of times younger individuals will obtain these policies. A lot of physicians when they're in med school, income is about to take a huge jump in a couple years. So they will lock in a convertible term policy based off their health rating today, and then they can flip it over to whole life later without having to go through underwriting, okay? So we took the term policy out as an alternative to this because it wasn't a fit yet. Let's look at the limitations here. So five years in is when we are going to assume we convert this policy. Let's begin with the term policy on the left. So five years in, we're in year six here when we decide to convert it. So the term, begins year six in this example. We are now 40 years old. The preferred design, meaning this individual says, okay, I can pay in the $30,000, let's go with the original plan, I really like that, the idea of getting 150,000 in, the ability to keep paying, but I wanna stop altogether after that, I don't wanna be required to. So we've got 150 going in. 1090 split, very, very similar cash values to the 35 year old male individual. Um, this one's slightly less just because he's a bit older, but we designed it with the same $3,000 base premium, added a bit more term because he's 40 now for the same million dollar death benefit. So the liability for the company is exactly the same, looks good. However, you may have observed this already. Here we've got requires full underwriting. This has to do with the limitations. This is the important piece here. So the requirement here is when we convert the policy, if it's five years in this particular example, of the 1 million, the whole life death benefit must be a minimum of 500K, which forces a base premium for a 40 year old male of $8,725, not $3,000, which is what he preferred. If he wants that, that's going to require underwriting again. So if he wants to convert the term policy to whole life insurance, it's going to force a higher base premium. Now he can still pay in 30K per year. The MEC limit, because he's older now, is about 36K. So we could optimize it a little bit more than what we have illustrated here. But let's assume just apples to apples from a funding standpoint, death benefit. Here's what I wanted with the convertible term. I couldn't get it because of the limitations that exist with the particular insurance company here. So here's my alternative. Does it make sense or does it make sense for me to go through underwriting? Same out of pocket, okay? Break even's a bit delayed. My cash value right off the bat is $5,300 less. The reason why 
is the base premium is being overcharged in the first year with this example to satisfy the cost of the death benefit, the primary cost of the death benefit, I should state. Now, as time passes, what happens? Falls further and further behind. Why this death benefit drops year eight in all of the examples, except for the term, by the way, some extra information. We illustrated a reduced paid up there, so we killed the premium. But cash value continues to fall behind, and the reason why is due to the higher base premium, how it was originally structured, which we were forced to do this. So that is a limitation we want to be aware of. You know, a lot of times you know, we receive calls from individuals stating, hey, I want to convert this term policy, but my agent's showing me a higher base premium. Are they trying to you know, take advantage of the situation? It's like, no, they're not at all, actually. The issue is really outside of their control, it has to do with the insurance company limitations. And this stuff, you've got to dig for it or learn through experience <laughs> that companies do assess limitations on term insurance conversions when I'm blending a policy. If I'm just buying a, base, buying a basic whole life insurance policy, no problem. But if I want to design it with a minimum premium, term rider, optimize the cash value, there are limitations that I need to be aware of. And this is a general video. Why I mention this is every company does have slightly different limitations. You know, I use that five-year example quite a bit. If I convert within the first four years, I can squeeze that premium a bit lower. If it's beyond five years, a lot of times I have that 50% whole life death benefit requirement, which forced, in this particular example, an $8,700 premium. And the older he grows, the higher that would be, it, based on when he starts. So. Good to be aware just of the information up front because the last thing I want if I'm an agent putting someone in these products or a consumer considering this is to think I can get this and then told no by the company. You have to go with this option unless you go through underwriting. And then the response is, well, the whole point of buying that convertible term policy was so I didn't have to go through underwriting again. So again, know this is a lot of information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out anytime. As always, I hope this helps. I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.